Hello and welcome back. In this tutorial I'm going to show you how to take a pretty modern photo like the one I have here. Um, as you can see it's a pretty modern image of a barn. And I'm going to show you how to make it look vintage and old. Um, I'm sure you've seen a lot of, uh, of tutorials maybe like this, but uh, this one should be a little bit different. They, uh, they all have their unique qualities. This one has its own. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and get into it with that. And uh, let me warn you that I, I, I have gone through, I went through this once and uh, and I took some notes, so uh, if I if I slow down at all, please bear with me. I'm just uh, reading my notes a little bit. I'm going to try to go through it as fast as I can for you. Okay. The first thing that we want to do is uh, double-click our background layer to unlock it. And click OK. The, uh, the next thing that we're going to do is go up to <coughs> Image, Canvas Size, and we're going to add around 40 pixels to the width and to the height to uh, make a border. And you certainly don't need to add a border, um, but I think it adds a little bit to the, to the picture. It uh, kind of looks like a Polaroid or something like that. If you add a border in, maybe it gives it a little bit more of a vintage look. So it's one thing that I like to do. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and add 40 pixels to the width and 40 pixels to the height. And what that'll do is that'll just give us a 20-pixel uh, border around the edge. And uh, that's about right for, for any picture, I would think. Um, you can certainly adjust that if you'd like. Um, the next thing that we want to do is go to our layers and just add a new layer. And we can just click down here to add a new layer. And uh, we'll go to our colors here. And uh, we're going to change the color from white. It should not be white. Like I said, I went through this before, so I already have a color in there uh, for later on in the tutorial. But uh, for now, we're going to change it to F9. F1 E5. And that was just a color that I thought looked pretty good. You don't want to get too drastic with this um, so that the border looks fake. So then we'll just take our paint bucket, which is over in our tool palette, and we're going to fill in that layer with that color. And then we're going to move that layer down to our background so that it makes a nice border like that. The next thing that we're going to do is uh, double click on that layer and uh, <clears throat> That'll open up our effects, and we're going to add an inner glow um, to that layer. And we're going to change this to about 75. Uh, we're going to move the noise slider to about 5. Add a little bit of grain already to our photo, to the edge. And uh, we'll change um, our choke to about 12, 10 or 12, 13. I guess is what I ended up with, and this one to about 40, 40 or 45, something like that, and that should be pretty good, and we'll cl uh, click OK. And uh, you, you're going to see a little bit of a difference in that as we get, go on a little farther, but like I said, with the border subtleties a little bit better. The next thing that we want to do is, uh, <clears throat> in the layers panel, um, containing our photograph here, we're going to go to filter, we, so make sure you have your, your photograph. Uh, selected, and we're going to go filter, uh, noise, and add noise. We're going to add about 4% uh, noise with uh, uniform distribution, and then we want this monochromatic uh, selected down here so that it looks kind of like this, and we're going to click OK. Uh, <clears throat> the next thing that we want to do is kind of remove the color from this layer to make it look pretty old. So we're going to um, add an adjustment layer. So we'll go down to our adjustment layers down here and click and add a hue and saturation adjustment layer. And we're going to uh, colorize that layer. So you can click the colorize checkbox. It's a good opportunity to use that. And we're going to desaturate it a little bit to somewhere right in here. And maybe pull the hue down a little bit. It's not going to really matter since it's uh, pretty much desaturated. And we'll go ahead and uh, make the brightness a little bit more. Maybe about 25. Oh, that looks a little too bright. Let's do about 20. 15. 15 or 16. And you're going to have to uh, judge your own picture on that one. Um, so <clears throat> this is where I'm going to use it on this one. It should look something kind of like that. Okay. <clears throat> then the next thing that we want to do is, uh, and we'll just move this down here for now, and uh, what we'll do is we'll right-click on this hue and saturated, uh, saturation adjustment layer, and we'll... Uh, create a clipping mask. And then what that'll do is it'll just allow a little of our... It restricts the uh, the mask a little bit and it allows the picture to come through a little bit more. So, uh, so uh, that's just a... It looks a little better that way. 
So uh, the next thing that we want to do is we're going to add a new um, adjustment layer, and it's going to be an exposure adjustment layer. And we're going to change the settings to negative 1.2. Uh, offset should stay at 0. And this can stay at about, uh, let's take it down to about 0.9. And uh, that should be pretty good. Um, that's where we want it, I think. And then uh, we'll just, like the other one, get, just hide that for now. Just get rid of that. Just put it over here. Okay, that's fine. And we'll right click on that exposure layer and also make it a, a clipping mask on there. So it'll just like, and you can see a big difference there. It pulls that border through, right through that, and restricts that clipping mask a little bit, but it still adds a lot to the image. Um, the next thing that we want to do is go to our brushes <coughs> and select our brush. And what we'll do is go up to the top here and click on this thing, this little folder with the brushes on it, and it opens up our uh, kind of brush options here. And what we want is to click on Shape Dynamics and make sure that uh, the control is uh, pin pressure. And, uh, and that's pretty much it for that. But we, uh, we also want to go to our... Uh, you can go to your brush presets and select a bigger brush if you want. And uh, then just kind of minimize that. But make sure that your uh, hardness is set down to zero as well. So click on your brushes up here and set your hardness down to zero. And uh, make your brush size a little bigger maybe even bigger yet, something kind of like that. And we're just going to brush the central part of the image in with this. And you can kind of play it by ear. This is pretty strong, but we'll see what happens here in a second. So what we're going to want to do is uh, <clears throat> what I did is I created that clipping mask too soon. Um, what we're going to do is disable this clipping mask. We're going to delete, disable. We're going to release the clipping mask, and what we'll do is we're going to go ahead and brush in that area um, before we add the, the clipping mask. So we're going to go ahead and do that brush step. And then we're going to add our clipping mask. And I'm just going to go real quick. You can be a little bit more precise if you want. But then we right-click on the exposure layer, and we add that uh, clipping mask. And uh, as you can see... That's uh, that's about what we get. If it's a little harsh right here, what we'll do is we'll just uh, we'll uh, reverse the colors on our brush here, and we'll just brush a little bit more of that back in to the image. And that's a pretty hard brush, um, even with the uh, the hardness at zero. So what we'll do is we'll take the opacity down to about 30, and we'll just go along that edge, just kind of fill in those hard areas there. you can certainly do that as well, because you don't want uh, that line to be in your image. <clears throat> okay, so the next thing that we want to do is um, <clears throat> create a new layer. And you can certainly name these layers. I'll name this one Scratches, because this is where we're going to take our brush, bump up the hardness to 100%, take the brush size down to about one pixel, and we're just going to draw in some of these scratches. And uh, this can be just real random. This isn't going to make a big difference. We're going to add more scratches in later that are going to make a bigger difference. But just add as many scratches as you want, really, in there. That's going to be good for now. Because the next thing that we're going to do um, <coughs> is add noise. And uh, what we'll do is we'll go up to Filter, uh, Noise, and Add Noise. And what we're going to do is we're going to add a lot of noise. Uh, probably about, let's add 40% noise to this. And we're going to do Gaussian noise and monochromatic. And, uh, and uh, once again, I have skipped a part. Sorry. First, we need to fill this layer in with... Um, with a paint bucket, and we want this to just be white, so we'll change it back to black and white, 
and you can just click on this to change it back to black and white and we'll switch that around and we'll fill this in with a paint bucket and now we're going to go to filter noise and add that 40 percent Gaussian monochromatic noise and we're going to click OK and then now we're going to take our magic wand tool we're going to click um, you can up your tolerance to about I have mine at 35 that's pretty good and we're just uh, gonna click until we have something that looks kinda like this and we're going to just um, select uh, we'll just press backspace and delete all the uh, extra areas there and then we'll uh, take our marquee tool and just click somewhere get rid of that selection and that's pretty much what you're left with so you can start to see what it's uh, starting to look like um, <clears throat> And now on the same layer, you can go ahead and take your brush again. And, uh, and you can kind of see what these little scratches did before as they kind of made these little spots uh, kind of line up in interesting ways. But what we'll do now is we'll take our brush again, and it's that same hard brush. And we're going to take that white color, and we're just going to um, go ahead and make some more scratches in there. you got to make sure your opacity is back to 100, and we're going to just brush some more scratches right back into there. And these ones are going to stay more permanent. So, I'm going to just leave them about like that. And then we're going to take our blending mode of the scratches layer, and we're going to go to Overlay. And we're going to take our opacity down to around uh, 35, and <clears throat> 35, 36, something like that, and we'll press OK. And that's what we're going to end up with right there. Um, <clears throat> and then what we'll do is we'll, we're going to add more scratches. And we're going to do this, uh, it's not really scratches, it's more of like a film grain or something like that. But what we'll do is we'll go to uh, make a new layer by clicking our new layer down here. And uh, we'll just, I'm just not going to rename this one just to save a little time, but you can name it whatever you want. And what we're going to do is we're going to change this color, double click on the color, and we're going to change this color to uh, D9, C3A9. And uh, then we're going to click OK, select our paint bucket tool, and fill that layer in with that color. We're going to go to Filter up at the top. We're going to go to Texture, and then Grain. And we're going to, uh, I've already uh, pre-put in these settings, but we're going to want to make sure this says Grain, which it will. And we're going to want the intensity at about 30, the contrast at about 1, and the grain type at vertical. And we're going to click OK. And that's what that's going to look like. Um, <clears throat> next thing that we want to do is change our blending mode on this layer to soft light. And that's what that looks like. And you can pretty much leave that like that if you want, if you like the way that looks. But I'm going to change my opacity down a little bit to about 50%. Or you could even do a little bit less. Um, I like 50% for this one. And then uh, <clears throat> the very last step that I like to do is uh, take the marquee tool on, uh, and we select our picture there, and we take our marquee tool, and we're going to select a little bit inside the photo. And we're just going to soften that edge a little bit to make it look more real and a little bit more vintage. So you select an area about like that, you go to uh, select inverse so that we have this area selected, and we're going to go to our filter, uh, blur, Gaussian blur, and um, We'll go ahead and we're just going to add uh, a pretty slight Gaussian blur to this. Um, just a, a few pixels is pretty good. Maybe um, maybe what we'll do is we'll just add about uh, one one or two pixels. About one. I have 1.5 set here. I'm going to go up to about two, uh, and that might be too much, but kind of play it by ear, how you ever you want to do it. And that's uh, looking pretty good. That's uh, like you see, you can see how it blended that edge a little bit. <clears throat> the next thing, uh, that's it. Actually, that's the that's the last step. So you can adjust any of these layers as you want. Maybe you think 